Hi and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at competitive analysis and how to perform a competitive analysis. So what's the definition of competitive analysis? Well, a competitive analysis template is a strategic tool that allows you to examine how your company stacks up against both your direct and your indirect competitors. Now, you can define direct competitors as companies that are basically selling the same products and services that you sell. And you can define indirect competitors as companies which don't sell exactly the same products and services, but the products and services that they do sell satisfy the same needs. Now, for indirect competitors, this should also include companies in different industries, um, but which could switch relatively easy to become one of your competitors. So an example of this might be a company, if you're selling home insurance and another company which doesn't compete with you only sells car insurance, it's not a huge stretch for them to switch. So the benefits of competitive analysis include it's going to assist you in your strategic decision making. It will highlight the strengths and the weaknesses of your own organization as well as the strengths and weaknesses of your competitors. It's gonna uncover potential opportunities in the marketplace that you may want to exploit. And it's going to help inform your value proposition. That is how you stand out in the marketplace compared with your competitors by analyzing exactly how you differ to your competitors. It makes it easy to see how you stand out. Now, when we do a competitive analysis and we complete the competitive analysis template, there are four broad factors that we need to consider. So company highlights, market information, product information, and SWOT information. Now these sections will make more sense in a few minutes when we look at an example, but let's quickly run through what's included with each in section, each section. So firstly, company highlights. So here we have company profile, and this is just a brief summary of the company. So you might include, for example, when the company was founded, how many employees it has, that kind of thing. And the other thing it includes is the company's key competitive advantage. And this just gives you an opportunity to call out the reason this particular company is successful in the marketplace. The next section is market information. And within this section, we include, you know, what's the target market? So if it's a B2C company, we exactly define the customers that they're selling to. And in B2B, same thing, but the customers just happen to be businesses in this case. Who are these businesses? Um, we specify the market share. Usually it's a percentage. So, you know, they could have 80% market share if they're completely dominant or, you know, less than 1% if they're not dominant at all. And, and finally, you know, we highlight the marketing strategies they use. Um, so that could be anything, you know, it could be like paid advertising, word of mouth, organic traffic from Google, or maybe, you know, they reach customers through affiliates or wholesalers. There's a whole range of marketing strategies they could be using. Uh, the next section is product information. So, here you kind of briefly describe what kind of products and services they are selling. You look at the pricing um, for their key products. If they've got loads of products, then just stick to the key ones or the ones that you're interested in that relate to your business. And finally, you know, what distribution channels are they using? And by distribution channels, I mean the mechanism or the chain of other businesses through which the company sells its product, products and services. So for example, it could sell direct to the end user or it could use wholesalers, retailers, affiliates. You know, there's a whole bunch of options to get your product from the company through to the end user. So finally, SWOT information. Now SWOT should be familiar to all of you, but if it isn't, then I suggest you go and have a look at the video on how to perform a SWOT analysis. There's one interesting thing to note in this section, and that's the presence of trends as a category. Now, a traditional SWOT analysis can be somewhat myopic in nature, by which I mean that after completing a SWOT analysis, 
companies can kind of go inward looking. So they start looking at, say, for example, their weaknesses and they start to come up with action plans to fix things internally. What they don't do is kind of look out to the wider marketplace beyond just, for example, their business, their industry, out into the trends going on, the broader trends in the world. So an example of this might be that, you know, self-driving cars are an emerging trend, but that trend could have huge implications if you run a car insurance business, for example. So let's take a look at a competitive analysis example and all this should start to make much more sense. Here we have a really simple completed competitive analysis template. In it we have just two companies. So we have our company here, company one, and we have a competitor. And as you can see here, um, this competitor is a direct competitor. On the left hand side here, um, we have all the different categories we mentioned. And next to that in this column here, we have the broader categories that they fit into. So if we look at our competitor here, for company profile, we can see it was founded in 1998 and it offers training to people who want to learn. That's very broad. You might want to go a bit more specific. What's their key competitive advantage? Well, they have huge organic reach through Google. They have in excess of 2 million visitors a month. Their target market is professionals who want to get ahead technically, aged 23 to 40, who don't have a degree. Um, their market share is approximately 15%. Their marketing strategy is through their huge organic traffic, and that's their only real marketing strategy, according to this. Um, the products they sell, they sell a subscription that gets you access to all courses. Now, if you look at us, here, we offer courses that are paid one by one. So you can see we're starting to kind of pull out the key differences between the two companies. Uh, the, the product costs $12 a month, whereas ours costs $20, pound per individual, $20 sorry, per individual course. Distribution channels, they sell direct. Um, they don't use affiliates. The strengths, obviously, is the huge organic traffic we've previously mentioned, plus also the breadth of courses they offer. Um, but one of their weaknesses here is with so much content, it's costly to keep it up to date. Um, that could potentially be an opportunity for us over here. Um, another opportunity for them would be to offer different pricing models, because um, at the moment they just offer the subscription. And a threat here is, you know, a more fun, maybe a gamified solution um, with easier to digest content. Maybe their content is a little dry. Uh, you know, that could be a competitor. And then in trends, we haven't put a trend in for the competitor. Um, but for us, it seems online learning at your own pace is a trend. Um, and learning that lasts your entire career is a trend as well. And, you know, as part of strategy setting, you need to think about how that affects what you want to do with your business. So, in summary, strategic analysis can help you understand how you compare to your competitors in key strategic areas. And it can be useful for finding your strategy, for finding opportunities and articulating your unique selling proposition. So that's it for this lesson. Don't forget that you can download a strategic analysis template below this video so you can you know, get started creating your own strategic analysis straight away.